And we put the door facing you guys. Hey, it's Andrew Bocher with GY6 Outdoors. Today we have a tent review. Uh, a lot of you guys were requesting it over at Patron. How easy is it to take down? Um, the process, comfort level, the room, the space, all sorts of stuff, information that goes into a tent and also value. There's a lot of money you can dump into a tent. A lot of the times you don't need to dump that much money into it, especially if you have you know, maybe two seasons of camping and you're not gonna be doing it so often in extreme temperatures or in extreme snowstorms or winds you know if you're not camping in those situations you don't need to spend a ton of money on a tent Ugh. we have the kelty circuit 2 tent this tent is very affordable it's sub 100 dollars, which is a good price range uh, there are a lot of good tents sub 100 dollars, and there are a lot of crappy tents sub 100 dollars. so it's it's important to test them because a lot of the people that are going out for weekend camping or the first time going in the outdoors or camping in general they don't want to spend a ton of money on a tent because they're not sure if they're going to like it so sub 100 dollar tents are usually the ones that are bought the most the expensive ones we will be getting into. We need more, obviously, uh, fan funding, so that's what we have Patreon for at patreon.com forward slash GY6 Outdoors. The more we get people on board and we have fans coming over to help support, the more higher end stuff we can test. Right now, all out of pocket and uh, not cheap when you buy a ton of stuff. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, there's a ton of different price ranges when you get into small tents as well uh, due to the fact that the quality increases when you go from a two season tent to a three season tent to a four season tent and for extreme temperatures and weather your tent needs to be kick ass put that down over there ah makes my job that much more fun but yeah i have used this tent i've used it for about a year now just about a year uh, that's when they first came out and i've liked it a lot uh it it does what you need it to do for an affordable price and i've put it through the ringer in extreme temperatures and pushing just below sub-zero, so about negative one, negative two degrees, and it was very warm for being just a three-season tent. Uh, the winds were fairly high, not extreme. It did snow on me, it did rain on me, it did hail on me, no leaking, no issues there. Um, water testing for these tent tests, I'm not gonna do most likely. If you guys really want me to, I can. I can take it into the backyard and spray it with a hose and be like, hey, look, there's no water. Um, which is a good thing. I mean, certain tents do leak even though, even though they say they don't. So we might want to do that. If you're okay with me doing backyard <laughs> hose testing on a tent, if you want to see that, let me know in the comment section. Say yay or nay um, for water testing like that. I, I want to test the water aspect, but it seems pretty boring. But it is... Oh. Excuse me. A lot of condensation, though, does build up inside of tents due to the fact you're warm, the outside air is cold, condensation happens on the inside of the tent and the rain fly and it'll drip sometimes inside your tent so you will get moisture but it doesn't mean the tent is leaking so keep that in mind so the circuit 2 tent it's a good design uh, like i said it fits me i am six foot three 225 pounds and i fit very well in it when i'm perfectly stretched out my feet are kind of touching the back side of the tent and my head is about three inches about three or four inches away from touching the other side of the tent it is a freestanding dome design tent uh, it has a what they call on the packaging let me take a drink before I say this an easy entry D door so that's better to say it that way rather than saying easy entry D door no? Okay, maybe it's just me. I'm, maybe I shouldn't drink right now. So an easy entry D door, um, always good to have on your tent. It really sucks to have the hard entry one. <laughs> My bad, okay, children watching. I don't think children would be watching a tent review, but never know, maybe with family. I apologize, I'm sorry. Adult humor, they shouldn't understand that anyway. If they do, you need to really pull the reins back in your children's knowledge about innuendo so yeah it says it has internal pockets and gear loft for storage 
pretty awesome. It does have storage pockets as well. Most tents do. Uh, moving on. Uh, does have aluminum tent poles. So they are pretty sturdy. I don't have any issues with them. I've banged them around a little bit and I've, you know, I've collapsed them as fast as possible and I don't have any issues with them bending. I haven't tried to bend them either though, but they are aluminum, so they will, but they allows you to save weight. It says stay dry with full coverage fly and fully taped seam. So waterproof rain fly, always good to have. Uh, don't go camping without a rain fly. I don't care what the weather says. If it says you're never going to have rain this week, they're liars. Every time you hear that, it's going to rain. So always be prepared. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best, and you'll enjoy your time in the outdoors. Guy lines and stakes are included. That's true. Guy lines are in here. I don't usually use guy lines because I'm not in extreme winds. Stakes are plenty. Four corner stakes are plenty for what I go into usually. If there is going to be high winds and I'm going into like a mountainous area or climbing a mountain and being on the side of a hill in a snowstorm, I will bring guy lines because that is important. You want to stake your tent down as much as possible. Hold it where you want it to be. You don't want it going anywhere. Fly vent for increased ventilation. That is a good aspect. Some tents are kind of stuffy. They don't have enough ventilation in the upper part of the tent. So if you're sitting down like this in the tent, uh, you have three feet, seven inches of clearance from the ground to the roof before you start hitting. Now that depends upon where you sit in the tent as well. If you're too far back, uh, you could be hitting that dome part even at a shorter height. But if you're right in the middle of it, it's three feet, seven inches. And if I'm sitting like this in the tent, my head is, it's got some, a little bit of room, but not much. Uh, the floor space, it is 33 square feet of floor space. But remember with the tent, 33 square feet of floor space doesn't mean you have that much room to move around. It's just the square footage of the base of the tent. So certain tents that have, um, they have a cross beam tent pole. It pulls the sides of the tent away so you don't have this collapsed feeling. Kind of like when you're in the shower with a shower curtain. If your shower curtain's perfectly lined up with the uh, tub, you don't feel like you have as much space. But if you get a curved shower curtain, you feel like you have more elbow room because it pulls it away. I know it sounds like common sense, but it's good to know. Um, so you have seven feet, four inches from one end to the other. But once again, the tent slopes down. So you have to cut off about four inches on each side um, and that is roughly what you have to go off of usually is about four to five inches on each side because that tent slopes I mean yeah if you're friggin a hobbit and your foot's barely going that far out yes you'll have seven feet four inches but most feet are gonna be like this you'll be hitting a part of the tent eight inches before the maximum distance keep that in mind and you have four feet six inches on width which is nice beer break Oh, I think I'm going to enjoy GY6 Outdoors more than I do GY6 Vids, and that has guns in it. Thank you, Terminal Gravity. They're not a sponsor yet. You never know. I love their beer. Their Tap Out's one of my favorite beers of all time. It's called Tap Out. High octane stuff and delicious. Oh, we'll open this up, take this out real quick. Let's set this thing up here in a second. So this is the bag. Uh, it's important to notice and know the girth of the bag you're taking, especially if you're going to be backpacking. Uh, every inch of space and every ounce of weight is important, especially if you're going for long, long distances. You know, your big three, <laughs> you're going to want to save as much weight as possible. Notice the difference in size. A lot of tents are huge. This one, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's stating that it is eight inches in overall diameter and 22 inches overall length. So, you have a decent pack size. And the weight, one of the most important things, packed weight, four pounds, 12 ounces, minimum four pounds, two ounces. I'm guessing their minimum is because they're removing some of the stakes, you're removing maybe the guy lines, you're removing some of the, maybe the internal pocket areas, the netting that holds up in the top. Maybe it's without the rain fly. I don't know, but I would not, I'd rather pack another seven, eight ounces and take the rain fly. It's starting to rain a little bit. Now we can utilize the rain fly. Hey! Instructions that come with the circuit one, two, and three. So there are different sizes. This is the circuit two. The three is a three man tent. The one is a one man tent. Pretty self explanatory. So either way, we'll link all three tents in the description. All right. So to be straightforward and brutally honest, I myself am not the best tent setter upper. So in a group of people, if there is four, I might be top three. Uh, I like to take my time so I don't have to get up in the middle of the night and fix what I messed up. But I also throw away the instructions and just kind of wing it. And that's probably half my battle. 
That's why it's good to know a tent that you have and bring it with you consistently. <laughs> but because I test out different gear and I'm always trying out new things, it's always a fun learning experience. So when you get your tent, fold it out, lay it out onto your tarp. Inside you're gonna find, usually, your stakes. We found those. You'll have a bag for your tent poles. Put those to the side. Your rain fly, put those to the side. Lay your tent out. I personally don't stake down the tent yet because the tent's gonna move around a little bit once you start putting the poles in. Always keep your tent closed until you're ready to go inside of it because bugs get inside of it, all that fun stuff. I'm not trying to teach you how to set up a tent, I wanna show you how to set this one up. Poles extend out and then they snap together. Very, very, very simple. Even I can do it. Oh, almost had it. And this is why I'm ne never the fastest. Oh! Got it! I end up dicking around and that's why I'm usually not the fastest. Alright. Ah, oh, crap! All my hard work, once again, why I'm not the fastest. There it is. Got it again. Two for two. Keeping pressure on that one. You're trying to poke these through the little eyelet areas. There's little holes at the end of the tent. All they do is they fit right into it, both sides. Next set of poles going together. Yes! You take the other end of the tent, you see this little eyelet, keep pressure on it, Boop. poke that through there. Another nice thing about smaller tents is you can do pretty much everything without having to climb all over it like a monkey. This one goes up, hook everything in, ta-da! Just like that, and then there's clips all around the tent that you snap onto very easily the tent poles. And we put the door facing you guys. Just like that. So your tent is stable, it's good to go. You could leave it like this if you wanted to. Um, it doesn't mean you have to, you don't have to put on a rain fly. Uh, you also can put the rain fly half on and then tuck most of it underneath the tent. If it's not gonna be raining and you have good weather, that way you can see the stars at night, um, have this open, a lot of good air, especially if it's hotter. Like right now it's a little bit hotter, but at nighttime it's pretty damn cold. So if I wanted to take a nap, I can sleep in here. Make, makes it nice because you have wind coming through, it's relaxing, you hear the birds, you hear the animals, and you're not completely stuffy because of the heat from the sun cooking you, so you can keep it off. And then all you have to do is flip it up, two snaps, and you have your rain fly on if it started raining. Uh, rain fly is stupid simple to put on, they even color coordinated it for you. So for me, that's huge. I'm always, <laughs> okay, nope, back. Okay, nope, back, okay, I got it. That's my way of putting on a rainfly. It takes me forever usually. So having color coordinated rainfly sections is good. So future tent testing, you'll, you'll see what I mean. You have black and you have, nope. Yep, there it is. See, I'm already doing it. I'm already doing it. You have black clip and you have a red clip and, uh, or black clips and red sash, black sash they plug into their corresponding spots. So if I were to go like this, I know it's wrong because there's red, there's black, switch them up. You have the vent on this side. This vent, you can just Velcro up or Velcro down if you want it up or down. Depends on how much ventilation you want. You can tighten the rain fly as well. It has a vestibule area in the front that comes out. So you can stake this down like so. It keeps the rain and dirt off your stuff. So this gives you a vestibule right outside your door to put your shoes put your gear, put bags, um, keeps it dry somewhat, but it doesn't keep the bugs and critters out of it, so keep that in mind. Zippers work very well, surprisingly, for the price of this tent. A lot of cheaper tents, the zippers suck. One of my biggest pet peeves. The one and only thing that bugs me about this tent is when you open up the vestibule, sometimes the condensation inside will get wet. Obviously, most tents do that, especially when it's hot, cold. When you wake up in the morning or try to get out to go take a leak in the middle of the night, <laughs> uh, you have to push this away and you're slapping it and you're getting yourself wet and water kind of goes inside the tent because this is mesh. As you climb in and out of your tent, you're hitting like that, see? It falls on you, it comes back, it falls on you again and you're getting all that nasty condensation on you and that's 
that's never fun. So I wish they had something that can lock that back. There is a spot you can, there's this little loop right here that you can pull this through, but doing that, you're still touching this, you're still getting covered in water. Ugh. But you see how I get out, my shoulders are just touching everything. It gets wet, so if there's condensation. For the most part, that usually always happens if you're sleeping anywhere where it's slightly colder than the inside of the tent, you're gonna get condensation. So my only pet peeve, easy to set up, easy to break down, good for three seasons. You might be able to push it into four seasons depending upon how much warm clothing you have inside the tent and what bag you have. Uh, but if you had to, I think it'll be okay. Let me know other ideas, other tents, other items for the outdoors that you wanna see reviewed fully. If you guys like what we're doing and you want to be able to request certain videos or vote for certain videos or win prizes and giveaways like this, where you can just give away tents to people, uh, go check out our Patreon page. Consider becoming a patron. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon.